Things aren't always as they seem. Some of the nicest people often have terrifying dark sides. With the popularity of the internet and social media, it's becoming harder for celebrities to conceal their personal lives. One of the most controversial car shows, South Beach Classics, is coming back, but considering why the show got cancelled in the first place, should it? It was a fun show, but some of the reasons it got cancelled were, well, legitimate. Watch until the end of this video to enter our huge giveaway. I'm trying to do good now for all the bad I've done when I was young. It's really a skill is when I'm dead. That's the honest answer. Before we get into why it was cancelled, we should make sure everybody knows what South Beach Classics was all about. Like Fast and Loud, South Beach Classics was all about buying, selling, and trading vintage cars. Ted Vernon and his wife Robin would look at old cars, try to fix them, then sell them if they could. Some of the cars on this lot had history, such as being used in movies. But one of the show's selling points was that all the cars were some sort of unique. That means there's no guidebook to help with what they're trying to buy or sell. Like Rawlings on Fast and Loud, Vernon has a keen eye for treasure and will buy corpses if he thinks he can make them into something special. The show also showed a lot of the business side of the shop. There were a lot of scenes of Ted haggling for cars and Robin doing the necessary paperwork, sometimes behind her husband's back. But his goal was to fix cars and make sales, and it wasn't all glamorous. He even called some of the fixers gargoyles. But that attitude of his is what got producers interested in the first place. South Beach Classics ran from 2010 to 2017. Like most of the shows we talk about on this channel, South Beach Classics aired on Velocity Discovery but is streaming on Amazon Prime as of this video. Note that Robin was not in season 4. British model Lucy Clarkson replaced her in the show's last season. Six years ago, South Beach Classics vanished from television. There were rumors of a fifth season, but just recently, something surfaced. Why? It's a long story, but to start it, we should look at the history of its host, Ted Vernon. Now on today in Florida, vintage vehicles damaged after a chaotic collision at a South Florida dealership. Thousands of dollars worth of repairs now needed after this hit and run. The owner now speaking exclusively to 7's Jessica Holly about that wild wreck. I've got the whole thing on film. So I've got him clear. I've got his girlfriend clear. I got the whole thing clear. They were on the property about 35 minutes, appearing to debate their next move before hopping into another vehicle at the corner and taking off. Ted Vernon was born on October 17, 1948 in Long Island, New York. His father was a real estate agent, giving him firsthand experience in running a business and making a profit. But it also gave him experience with what he describes as tough love such as going to school with strep throat because his father thought he was well enough. Also, physical discipline was much, much more common back in those days. Vernon went to high school but pursued boxing as a career. He had always been willing to fight if someone got on his bad side. His boxing name was Wolfman, fitting considering his dual nature. In 1977, Vernon and a friend began fixing and reselling old vehicles. Two years later, Ted started his own business. Ted Vernon Specialty Autos was, as of 2017, the largest dealer of classic cars in Miami. Vernon's experiences were chronicled by Dick and Rick Tobin in a book called Collecting Cars for Fun and Profit. Just remember that it was made in 2005 if you decide to check it out. Ted Vernon was not just a car salesman. He was also a prolific actor and producer. He was the executive producer of John Carpenter's Village of the Damned, worked with Peter Fonda on South Beach, and played Arnold Cutter in The Victims. He has a legitimate list that extends far beyond car shows. IMDb adds that he may get a role in The Haunting of Darkenwell, Devil's Night. Check it out on his website. I understand that the Porsche is not a 911, I get it, but the thing is beautiful, the interior is beautiful, and I'm gonna go home with a a minivan. I gotta wrap my mind around that. So, you know, it's gonna be a little bit easier if I can wrap it in $100 bills. Listen, Frankie, I'll go 3500 Killing me, man. Come on. It's enough. Give me four grand and we'll call it even. Wow. Come on. You know what's worth it. About four grand and dinner Sunday night. Done deal. Done. Vernon has also starred in theatrical performances of The King and I and Annie, as well as several other smaller films. Throw in his band in various music videos, and Vernon has led an interesting life. 
you can see some of the band members in the South Miami Classics promo on the Beach Channel. We got the team on the lot and we are on the run. Hanging with my band is a lot of fun. And we know what it takes to be number one. We're just out here in the Florida sun. Ted Vernon had millions of dollars before he started selling cars. Once his show got on the road, the money kept coming. And through a good chunk of it, Robin was there filling out all the right forms. But what did he do that warranted jail time? The answer is a lot. The list includes felony, assault battery, carrying a concealed weapon, disorderly conduct, threatening a public servant, and even sexual assault. But we aren't going to detail everything he's done. He avoided jail time for all of those charges. For convenience sake, let's focus on the crime everyone knows Vernon committed, domestic abuse. Ted met Robin Zeal on a blind date in 1998. They got married in 2000. They ran South Beach Classics together. Despite Ted being extremely assertive, the two hit it off and got married in a Buddhist ritual in Thailand. Ted Jr. was born in 2004, but Robin was a motherly figure to Alexandra, the daughter from Ted's previous marriage, and Mark, his first son. Despite some violent arguments and Ted not taking no for an answer, Robin didn't know Ted Vernon had a history of domestic violence. For the most part, the audience of South Beach Classics had no idea there was trouble in paradise. The two divorced before things became official. Zeal made several trips to and from the house, but the most important incident in October 2015 happened after the two, separated for five months, were leaving a concert. Things grew heated that night when Zeal says Vernon took a call from another woman and taunted Zeal that he had upgraded. As they arrived home from the concert, she grabbed her keys and a bag of clothes from inside the house. Have a good night, Mr. Vernon, she said sarcastically on the way out. He chased her out into the driveway, wrestled for control of her phone, and struck her face so many times she lost count. Finally, he broke the phone loose from her grasp, picked himself up, and walked back toward the garage. You better get up, B-word, she heard him say, before I run you over. The police found Zeal banging on a neighbor's door to be let in. After that, they accumulated more evidence from texts and testimonies. This had been one in a series of assaults, often accompanied by threats of ruining her, taking the money and kids, for example. He was mentally and physically abusive. He got a restraining order from Robin in 2017. Zeal was not the only one abused. Every member of Vernon's immediate family reported something. One of his daughters, Alex, left home, changed her name, and got as far away as she could from her father. Thanks to a report Zeal found while leaving, we also have reason to suspect that Vernon abused his first wife. But Monica Sula, Alex's real mother, died in 2014 of liver cancer. We mostly know of the abuse through Alex's correspondence. Zeal stopped showing up to work in season four of South Beach Classics. It's a shame. On screen, they had good chemistry and seemed to be great business partners. It's not one of your jokes, is no, it? No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. I'm super excited. Are you gonna take it for a spin? Yeah. Thank you. Thank Careful. you so much. All right, you know, just, you know, be careful. I love you. Corvettes make people do some crazy things. Judge K. Michael Moore raised a good point in another article from the Miami New Times. Vernon had so many charges dropped or excused that he had gotten bold, even defiant, in the face of the law. Despite this, she let Vernon free because he had a very good attorney. Alex had a few words. We are disappointed in you, Judge Moore. You have let a dangerous man run free despite your own fears. What he does next is on you. If you feel compelled to do something about the situation, someone started a petition a long while ago. Link below. However, it's pretty stagnant. You might be better off contacting the Beach Channel. They seem committed to promoting him, but it would probably be more effective. Vernon has since been released. Today, Vernon is trying to take the company back. His shop has been rebranded. He has another wife, and yes, South Beach Classics will get another season, even though it was originally announced in 2019. The hiatus is unfortunately understandable. We haven't heard anything terrible yet, but all eyes will be on Vernon. He's made sure of it.
There's no date for the new season, but it might air on the Beach Channel, a Miami-based YouTube channel with some branded content, instead of Discovery or Amazon Prime. Max Weiler, the producer of the old show, will be involved in the new series. This probably means it will be free, but after everything that's happened, there's no way South Beach classics will be the same. We're expecting a lot of mixed opinions on this video. Domestic abuse is a serious issue that we can't joke about. The producer thought Ted Vernon deserved a second chance on the air. Do you? And this probably isn't the first time one of your favorite celebrities has had skeletons in their closet. Which celebrity's dark side surprised you most? Let us know in the comments below. Please keep things civil. If you made it to the end of the video, comment no crust to enter to win a $1,000 Amazon gift card. You must like the video and be subscribed to win. We'll see you next time.